night time, we're on the beach, who could I possibly pick to uh, come and chill with? Oh wait, yeah, it's the obvious one I was gonna pick. It wasn't even a moment of suspense. I made my way over to them. Hey guys, how are the fireworks going? Okay, Pego, good to see you, but stand back, we want this to be a surprise. Okay, sure, how long did it take you two to plan the trip? Peggy glanced at Danny, trying to figure it out. Not very long. I came up with most of the ideas, and then Danny did whatever he did to figure out the costs. He somehow made it cost exactly as much as we'd all raised to come to this trip. She beamed at Danny, and he gave me a look. Something told me my earlier hypothesis for how he spent the money was right. Well, thanks for going all this trouble for all of us. No problem, I felt we needed something to commemorate that we all came together. We've been uh, living together for months now, and once summer rolls around, we won't see each other. That's just how it is. We might as well do something as a unit and live it up while we can. Peggy bent over a firework, a lit wand in her hand. There they go, and this is the running away scenario. <laughs> Remember, you're supposed to be about 150 or 100 feet away from a firework when it's lit. I bet, I bet we are at best 20 feet away. There they go. Hang on, I thought we had... How much money did we have? <laughs> I guess we had an absolute shitload. Yeah, no, we, we probably did have enough to afford these fireworks. Peggy darted away from the fireworks as the sparks illuminated the first fireworks string. I gasped. The entire bunch were arranged in a giant spiral, an elaborate patchwork of explosives. We sat and watched the fireworks as they went off, shouting when we saw something we liked and cracking jokes. It was funny, but for the first time since meeting the entire group, I felt a sense of belonging, togetherness. We felt like a family. When the last firework finally died in the night nice sky, I blinked tears from my eyes. With the end of this trip came the realisation I was trying hard to avoid. My time was growing short. This was the last leg of my trip into England. The last two months I could spend with these people. I had to make them count. Okay, good. At least we didn't skip several days. Yep, these are roughly the uh, costumes I expected everyone to wear. It... I don't want to bring too much attention to Angela's chest, and I do mean her stomach. She has exactly the same muscle definitions as Angelo does. Look into that in the way that you will. We girls, except for RC, got together to play two-on-two -two beach volleyball. Peggy was on a volleyball team back in uni, of course, but Ashley was also surprisingly competitive. Jeho and I were mostly there to just round out the numbers, but it was still fun for a while, as we played a group of several college-aged boys gathered around us to watch. Their eyes were roving up and down our bodies, especially when we had the ball. Peggy didn't notice at all, of course. She was probably used to guys checking out the team at games. Ashley wasn't bothered either, considering her work uniform. She probably didn't mind being oogled. I mean, hang on a second. Just because she is at work doesn't mean she's okay with it all the time. I, hang on a second. But she, Hio, and I shifted uncomfortably, too distracted to be able to give the game proper attention. As the game crept on, the boys grew rowdier, gradually starting to heckle us. Finally, Jihio, crossing her arms over her chest, approached me. I think I'm going to quit. I hate this. It's really freaking me out. Okay, go for it. It is pretty weird, to be fair. <laughs> Maybe. I glanced at the boys, who were now on all edges of the court. We'd have to walk past them to get out of their presence. Would they wolf whistle, or worse, make a grab for one of us? Depends how drunk are they. It's Blackpool, actually. Even sober, they might try and kill you. It's Blackpool. Don't blame the people. Blame the city. Terrible place. Did you know people in Blackpool all evil? There you go. It's much easier to pick on Blackpool than it is gingers, because I'm almost certain that no one from Blackpool is watching. <laughs> sure, they probably wouldn't, but... At that moment, Danny and Angelo appeared at the edge of the court, arms crossed. Angelo was livid, but Danny was smiling his usually easygoing smile. <laughs> Having trouble, ladies? Chihiro nodded, tears in her eyes. Angelo walked up to her and put an arm around over her shoulders, eyeing the guys around us as if daring them to make a move on her. He looked about ready to punch their lights out. <laughs> punch their lights out, Jesus. You can tell she's been in the UK for a few months now. Especially, God, no, you know what this is? It's Blackpool. A day here and she's already aggressive and wants to knock people out. 
Soon she'll be giving them the Glasgow kiss, if you know what I mean. Ready? Danny took my hand in his. Together, the four of us walked past the group of boys. <laughs> hey, sweetheart, can I ask? A guy stepped out and tapped my shoulder, a light smile on his face, but before I could even respond... Danny was there, the boy's arms twisted in an odd angle, and he was screaming. <laughs> now this really is Danny Dyer stuff. Is there any reason you laid in the head on my bird? Oh. No, no, sorry, I wasn't, ah, I wasn't thinking of doing anything. Hmm, that's what I thought. <laughs> oh, wow, he's apparently some, hang on, hang on. What's this? This is fine. This is a man, look, he looks normal, right? Now he is liberally applied eyeliner. Danny realised the guy's arm and took my hand, pulling me towards the hotel. After that display, the rest of the group gave us a wide berth. I stared at him in alarm. He looked pissed, but he avoided my gaze until we were out of sight of the remaining guys. Then he dropped my hand, his back turned to me. Danny, what was that out there? He ran a hand through his hair and took a few deep breaths. Oh my god. Does he always look like this? Or is it only compared to those eyes? This now looks equally terrifying. Then he turned towards me, a smile yet again on his face. I lost my temper, sorry about that. Chills ran down my spine, Danny scanned my face and nodded. Well then, I'll get out of your way for now, I'm sure you're tired, why don't you go rest? He gestured vaguely at somewhere, then headed inside the hotel without another word. I watched him go, completely confused. He'd always been so nice, so careful, so controlled, I knew about his past, but I'd never been able to connect the Danny I knew with whatever he'd been before. Was it really safe to be around him? Well, are you trying to put a hand on his bird? Probably not, so you're probably fine. There'd been no warning. One minute he was smiling, the next he was violent, and then it was like nothing was wrong. But Danny had never been anything but nice to me. I uh, couldn't tell whether I was being smart or stupid. I couldn't tell whether this was the right thing to do. I took a deep breath and went into the hotel. Danny? Danny, please open up. I know you're in there. I want to talk to you. The door flung open so quickly that I jumped and Danny appeared, wearing only a towel around his waist, hair wet. His hair doesn't really look wet, however his hair is trying to resemble the Superman logo in the, in the middle right there, Jesus. He also has an 8-pack! Surely that has to be inconvenient for playing football. At some point you have too much muscle. He leaned in the frame and gave me a smile, a different smile from his usual one. <laughs> so you came. I... He grabbed my wrist and pulled me into the hotel room, shutting and locking the door behind him. D -d Danny, what are you doing? I backed away, but he matched me step for step. I just came to make sure you were okay, so you don't have to be mad. My back hit the wall. There was nowhere else for me to go. He possibly has the shittest facial hair. I've ever seen on a man. Okay, look, I know mine's bad. This here is about two weeks worth of beard, right? It's it, it, it's pretty atrocious. This here, there were like long hairs growing horizontally until we get about here, and then it starts looking like a 14 year old. Danny just stood in front of me looking down at me. I could feel myself shaking. Where should I, <laughs> what should I? He placed a hand next to my head and leaned down, eyes glinting. D Danny? Then he kissed me, rough and intense. My response was pure instinct. I melted against him, my knees going weak, my hands on his shoulders to support, pulling him against me. His hands slid down my sides, and I became aware of the fact that all I was wearing was my swimsuit. <laughs> Have you only just realised this? His hand traced the strings, holding the back of my bikini together. Wait, wait, stop. Instantly, Danny pulled back, watching me with the same strange expression on his face. I was panting, fluorescent, unsure of what to do. I'm here to... I came to talk. I... Right, sorry, lost my call. He took wide steps back from me until he was all the way on the other end of the room, arms raised. Sorry, I didn't mean... No, it's okay, I liked it. I mean, I blushed and looked away, and he ran a hand through his hair. It's better if I tell you quickly now, so you can make up your mind. You might have been able to piece this together by now, but you see, how should I say this? I'm a very jealous man. I'm a very possessive man. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Are you also one of these people who, instead of seeking to remedy said bad situation, 
you choose to roll with it and say that it's a flaw in your personality that the others have to accept. Because I feel I, I'm getting this vibe from you that that is the case. Look, I'm terrified is what I'm trying to say. I know that that's not the most attractive quality. I don't want to control your actions or anything. I don't want to blackmail you or manipulate you or guilt trip you for looking at other men or any of that kind of thing. <laughs> but if you do, I'll, I'll fucking kill you. But I just don't want anyone else to touch you. I don't want to see anyone else touch you. I don't want to think about anyone else to touch you. I don't like anyone else even looking at you. I know it's me, it's in my head, and not everyone feels this way about their lovers. Apparently some people can just get over it by dealing with their insecurities, but for me that hasn't worked. It isn't because I'm insecure, it's just there, that's how I am. And that's why I haven't dated in the past few years. The way you reacted when I told you of my past, I began to hope. Again, I don't want to change anything uh, about the way you behave, it is not my place to tell you what to do. But I have to tell you this, those men who were watching you, their faces were etched onto my mind. And if I ever have the misfortune of running into the again, I will beat their faces in. I mean, at the time they didn't know, to be fair, you could argue they shouldn't have been there to begin with, but beating their faces in because they were doing, they were essentially following the crowd is a very bad, bad idea. There's a reason why vigilantism is illegal. We know this, right? That one who laid his hands on you, Danny calmly clasped his hands together. He was lucky I didn't lose it, but my priority was getting you to safety. His voice is so quiet I can hear my own heart beating. As you can see it, that kind of thing has certain effects on me, and well, it makes me want to ensure that you are mine in more physical ways. I apologise for throwing all that on you all of a sudden. You weren't warned, so you couldn't have expected it. He cleared his throat and looked at me again. His eyes were still dark, that would be the eyeliner. He was no longer smiling. So it is up to you whether you want to continue to pursue our relationship now that you know. Please, if it makes you uncomfortable, leave. I know jealousy can get be kind of sketchy in our relationships, and if you ever feel I am behaving inappropriately, you can leave and I will treat you as a friend or a stranger accordingly. However, if you are still good with this, with me, all of my cards are on the proverbial table. He looked at me and I stared back in silence. <laughs> Presumably thinking, oh no, what have I done? So, do we have a relationship or don't we? Well, it's uh, too early to end the episode, isn't it? Uh, oh my god! Well, the thing is, is that is completely wacko. That is... You know, ding, 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 get out of that scenarium, get out of that scenarium. If a girl said, like, oh, I couldn't stand it when, like, all the other girls... I'm talking from a personal experience here. I'm not reversing the sexism, creating a greater story out of sexism. I'm purely talking if it were me and I had a girlfriend and girls were watching me by the beach whilst I was playing volleyball. God knows why they would. I, first of all, I hardly have a six pack. But if they were, and I'm playing volleyball and I'm smacking it, and then suddenly my girlfriend came down, yanked me by the, well, I mean, took my hand, took me away, and someone went, um, hello, Chris, I couldn't help but notice it. She like, twisted her arm around me like, right, do that again, and you're dead to me, all right? Do it again, you're gone. And then in my room tried that shit and went, yeah, sorry, I'm just crazy, crazy jealous. I'd be like, it's you who said we could end this amicably. I am taking that option. <sighs> I just don't really know what I want to do. All right, I'll tell you what. This will be a short episode and the next episode will be longer. You guys decide what we do. We either accept Danny or end things now. Accepting is sort of what I'm expecting you guys to do, because you almost always pick the evil option. End things now is what I would do, because he's clearly little angry. He has some issues besides all the murdering he did when he was a child. 
Well, I'll uh, see you next episode. And um, we'll be turning him down, right? Right?